Hello, Flickering Myth family and all you Kanye stands. My name is EJ Marino, and we have a review today. As part of my Sundance 2022 coverage, we are talking about Genius Part 1. I can't believe my journey to be a Kanye West fan has been going on for this long. This documentary is great. The first part of Genius has been enjoyable to watch, but it also made me feel a bit old. It's also made me realize I do miss Kanye. As like he said on the song from Life of Pablo, I miss the old Kanye, the straight from the go Kanye. This was a great look back at an artist who I still respect, I just have fallen out of love with. You know, the Kanye shenanigans and a couple of gospel albums have pulled me out a bit, but I still respect the artist and I'm so glad this documentary exists. I cannot wait to see the full thing because this started off so strong. We have so much footage that I never thought we would see. I mean, little moments like Kanye kind of like watching the first R. Kelly scandal the way back in the early 2000s unfold. I mean, that was just little stuff like that. We get to see early footage of people like The Brat, No ID, and Common before he dropped the sense on his name. Yeah, I was blown away about the, the amount of footage this was allowed to have, how detailed this was, and how much it would make me miss this era of Kanye. I first found him way back in the day, maybe about 2005, and I was hooked there. He's an enigma. He is a great force. He is one of the most creative geniuses in our industry. He is just a bit of a madman, and this, this part of the documentary doesn't really get into the later shenanigans. It ends at a very crucial port in, uh, part in his career. So yeah, I like this early part. I just can't wait to see more, and if you're a big Kanye fan, there's a lot to watch here. Part 1 Vision shows a little bit of Cootie, who is making the documentary. We get a little bit of his backstory, and then we get straight into how he met Kanye. I mean, this is crazy of him watching Jay-Z buy a beat off Kanye the H to the Izzo, that beat, and then him going, I'm gonna have to follow this Kanye dude around. It was so cool to see this early of this journey, this kind of early bond between these two men, and that Kanye basically allowed him to follow him around, to open his life up very early. It was very, very interesting to see. This was very smart on both Kanye and Cootie's part of just going, shit, we're about to have a crazy once-in-a-lifetime artist here. We must capture this. So we get a lot of early Kanye footage. This first part is very, very early on. We break, I don't really want to spoil too much, I know it's a documentary, but we break at the very important part of Kanye's early career, which would shift his music and his sound to a different direction. So yeah, I like this. We get a lot of the mom stuff. I was really just touched by how personal, and I know Kanye is such a private human being now, I mean, the era of dating the Kardashians and stuff, and he's so public in so many certain ways and then so private as he is as an artist. We don't really get to see the human Kanye. This was what really blew my mind, is seeing him be a young kid, seeing this very fresh young artist get into it before the industry just shit on him, before pop culture, before life got to him. It was so cool to see him just so fresh fresh, working on music, I mean just early most deaf stuff, just that was so cool, it really just made me happy, it really made me want to go listen to like college dropout and late registration just to get that kind of vibe again, if that's going to be the biggest thing from part one, I would say this is going to make you miss old Kanye so much, I love like up to Yeezus or Life of Pablo, even Ye I think is a fun album, but I really go back and go, this was the moment where we had a pure creative genius, and I wish we could go back. Now, I know Kanye is a bit up in arms with the documentary. I think he did an Instagram post of him wanting the full creative control. He wants to make sure he can do it. But I would say, I hope he doesn't have any issues, at least with this first part. It was so honest, so detailed. It's never trying to, like, puff piece him. It doesn't seem like it's going to be like, well, look how nice of a guy he is. We know Kanye isn't always the friendliest of human beings. And he's allowed to be. That's fine. So I do say I hope he enjoys this. I hope Kanye and the like the diehard Kanye fans definitely enjoy at least part one. I haven't seen part two and part three. I'm very curious of how those are going to go. I believe next month on Netflix they come out. So make sure you guys check them out. Thank you for joining me for this early review of Genius, uh, Kanye 
trilogy. This is only my views of part one. If you did enjoy this review, make sure you let me know so I will review the other two parts when they drop. Make sure you guys comment down below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth if you like Kanye stuff or if you like music or Sundance and movie stuff. We do a lot on this channel, so make sure you stay tuned. All right, everyone, let's talk about Genius Part 1 down below.